If you have your Bibles with you, I want you to turn to the book of Psalms. I want you to go to Psalm chapter 127. And this is a psalm that was written uh, by Solomon, and it's regarding the house, the home. As you can see, uh, we, uh, the, the, uh, on the screen it says, except the Lord build the house. Well, let's read the psalm together, and then I've got some practical uh, biblical uh, encouragement for you that we'll get out of this psalm. Let's look at Psalm 127. And the word of God says, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain to build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of the mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. I want you to look, if you can, to that verse, the very first verse, it says there, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain. That build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh in vain. I want to speak to you this evening, or rather this, yeah, this evening, regarding the subject, regarding the subject of the Lord keeping and building your house. Who is in charge? When you look at any organization or any uh, group, who is in charge and who is in, determines what gets done? Who is in charge and involved that will determine how it gets done? Who is in charge will determine the order and things that get done? Who is in charge will determine why it gets done. Who is in charge will determine the quality of what gets done. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk to you about the subject of the Lord being in charge of your home, that buildeth your house. Ladies and gentlemen, who is in charge of your house and who is in charge of your life? Where is God in all of our plans? And I think as we're all sitting here tonight, almost 100% of the people that are watching, whether it be on one of the three platforms we're streaming on, 100% of us are in a home. We're on somewhat lockdown, except for various um, exclusions. We can get groceries, we can go to the hospital, that type of thing. So we're all in the home. Who is in charge of the home that you're in? There's a saying, there's an old hymn that we sing. It says, little is much if God is in it. And that's so true. If God's involved, little will bring a lot. But the counter to that saying is this. Now think about this. Much is nothing if God is not in it. And I think sometimes we get our priorities out of sync. We get the the idea of who's in charge, we kind of lose that perspective. And I believe that's what the psalm is saying. Unless our activity is ordered and directed by God, it's a waste of time and energy. See, we can set out projects on our own, even Christian service. We can build a vast organizational group, which we have done actually in the last 20 days, we've set in place organizational, um, an organizational group to get things done that we didn't even have 21 days ago. But if we do all of that, but the Lord is not in charge or the Lord doesn't build it up, it's all in vain. I think many people toil and work without God. We build our lives without really considering who is in charge. 
See, a builder has a blueprint, a unique layout of his creation, and that's us. The builder is dedicated to building his project and the process from pouring the foundation to the finishing touches. But yet the builder is God. He has to be involved in it. God is the builder of everything. We are his house. God has a unique layout for every one of us. And as we look in this tonight, I want you to consider, is God really the one that's building your home, that's involved in your home? I think about that. Several years ago, I was involved in a project uh, indirectly in Houston, Texas. And it was a, um, a lawsuit that was filed by a group of homeowners against a contractor. Uh, I wasn't directly involved, but there were some case studies that I was indirectly involved with this large litigation. And one of the things they found out is the designer, the engineer, the person that designed the buildings, the homes, had designed floor plans certain ways, but the builder, the contractor had cut corners. And to save money, what they did was, is when the inspector came around, the engineer was there, they had all of the rebar or the steel in the foundation. When the inspector checked it off and went to the next house, they pulled some of the rebar out to save money, poured the concrete and built the homes. Well, if you don't need to know a lot about stress and construction and engineering and those type of things to understand that it didn't take long, less than a year before the foundations were cracking. Because the designer of the facility, the owner, the designer, the one in charge, his plans were not followed. And yet the entire foundations in that area cracked. And there was a large lawsuit. I want to say this, ladies and gentlemen, God has given us a design plan. It's called the word of God. God has given us the church. The Greek, Greek word is ecclesia, a called out body of believers that we can worship and fellowship with the Lord. And that is his plan for our home and our house. But if we don't follow the designs, and if we get into the DIY, do-it-yourself religion, your do-it-yourself Christianity, we're not following his plans. And that's what we see in some places today. So if we look at the text, it says, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh in vain. So let's look at this area called a house. And I want to just take some points together in a little topical manner to talk about what is your house, your home, and your life? What should be a part of that? What, what should be inside of our homes? And how do we react to that? The house shall, number one, be built on Christ. I want you to turn, if you have your Bibles, to Matthew chapter 7, please. Matthew chapter 7. And I want you to look there just for a moment. Matthew chapter 7, and a pretty well-known portion of scripture. I use this in counseling people. It's really counseling 101. When you talk about, do you believe that God can help you in whatever situation you're in? And it says there, Matthew chapter 7, Jesus speaks at the latter part of the Sermon on the Mount. He says in Matthew chapter 7, go down to um, verse number 24, and talking about the words, the and we can equate that to this book, the Word of God. It says there, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and don't miss this, and doeth them. In other words, the person hears it, a house is built on Christ, hears the Word of God, and actually do does them. I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And we know in construction and home building, the foundation must have a solid underpinning for that home or house to, to be able to stand. And he says, if you build your life 
upon the word of God, what Jesus Christ says, and you do the things he says, that's like having that foundation. Now look at verse 25. Don't miss this. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon the house. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't mean that we're not going to have trials. It doesn't mean we're not going to have tribulations. We're going to have the rains and the winds and the floods. We're going to have the COVID-19 virus. We're going to have economic damage associated with that. We're going to have days of concern. But he says going on, but you're not going to fall. You might be wounded. But yet God's going to keep you standing because he has a plan and a provision and a purpose for your life. And then we see the house shall be built upon Christ. A home should be Christ-centered. It should be Christ-centered by not just reading and understanding the Bible, but living on biblical principles. Attending a house of worship weekly as the Bible clearly commands in Hebrews chapter 10. But look what happens to the other side. Everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, verse 26, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon sand. Now, if you know anything about construction, sand is not how you want to put a foundation on sand. It will wash away. It actually can be liquefied if shaken, and the house can sink through the sand. And it says there, remember, they're going to have the same trials you have. But how, what is the results of it? It says, and the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. So ladies and gentlemen, if we're going to look this evening, and we look at this topical manner of a home, as we looked in Psalm 127, that Christ needs to be a part of the home. It must be built upon Christ. Number two, the house shall not be ruled by possessions. Not by possessions. Again, I'm going through topically tonight. I want you to go, if you would, to uh, 1 Timothy chapter number 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. It shouldn't be ruled by possessions. You know, you let a home be ruled, controlled by what you have and what you don't have, and monetary possessions, you will have a home that is not ruled by Christ. It says there in 1 Timothy chapter 6, a great chapter on the idea of priorities in the home. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, it says, I'll get there myself. It says there in verse number 10, and we hear this a lot. Well, let's look back at verse number 6. 1 Timothy 6, 6. But godliness with contentment, look there, is great gain. Not ruled by possessions. And then it goes on and says, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we'll carry nothing out. Heard an old country preacher say years ago on this verse, this verse says that you cannot take the U-Haul behind the hearse. Whatever you have, you're leaving it behind. And then it goes on and says, having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. Verse nine, but they that will be rich fall into temptations and a snare and in many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. And then here's the verse I wanted to quote, I wanted to talk about. For the love of money is the root of all evil, not money, the love of it, the possessions, which some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. We should not be ruled by possessions. We must guard against materialism. A home that is 
ruled by possessions or always having more and more is a home that Christ, the Lord, except the Lord build the house, Christ is not involved in. We find in Job chapter 1, verse number 21, Job says, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We understand in Proverbs chapter 23, a great verse on how quickly riches disappear. It says, Will thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings, and they fly away as an eagle toward heaven. We've seen that with this virus, this COVID-19 virus, trillions upon trillions upon trillions, trillions of it. Now think about that, of wealth has disappeared in just a handful of weeks. God is in charge, not us. So I believe a home should not be controlled or ruled by possessions. And if we're not careful, our stuff starts to become our God. And we need to watch that. Number three, this is very important. Very, very important. Number three, we need to make room for others. I don't believe you can be a Christian that has the joy of the Lord if you're not serving or helping somebody else. We do not live in a vacuum. We're not here just to please ourselves and to worship and praise God and yet go out and not give a cup of water in Jesus' name. That is so counter to what we see in the New Testament. It's so counter what we see in the Old Testament. It's counter what the Bible says. We are to go out and praise God and let God be known, not just with our words, but with our deeds. Hebrews 13, 12 says this, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for, they, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Romans 12, 13 says this, We distribute the necessity of the saints given to hospitality. We need to make room for others. A house that has God-centered will be a house where children are constantly witnessing mom and dad lifting up and helping others and making room for other people. John 12, 26 says this, If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Jesus washed feet and he said we're to do the same we must be hoping we must be helping and serving others when god gives us a home we, he wants to care for our immediate family of course but he also has other people in mind the new testament makes it clear that god wants every christian home whether we are single or married or whatever to be a home that's inviting not necessarily to stay in your home but a home where jesus christ is lifted up and there's room for helping others first peter 4 9 says we use hospitality one to another without grudging i think with us today we I came in this afternoon, and you wouldn't believe all of the supplies here that were taken to the homeless shelter on Friday that we've been collecting today, and we'll collect it tomorrow. And that's one way, even in the midst of quarantine, you can serve others. You can write cards, you can send gifts, you can lift up others and help others. Stay at home, we're to serve others. Lastly, before we turn this over, a house, we should understand this is just temporary. If there's anything we realize that God's in charge, he's in control, and everything that we have, God can take it away. We better not get too comfortable here because this isn't our final resting place. 
We're going to talk about that on Sunday. We have a wonderful, wonderful, I believe, message, music, a God honoring, God lifting up Easter Sunday service with a couple promo videos leading in and a invitation at the end. And what I believe we as Christians ought to understand is this place is just temporary. As the songwriter said, I'm just a passing through. Hebrews 10, 24 says this. For ye had compassion, he's talking about Paul was saying of me and my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and enduring substance. In other words, this isn't your final resting place. While we live here for a season, this is a temporary living situation. Our earthly home is not our true home because we have a better home, one abiding that we find in heaven. Our citizenship is in heaven, and we await our Savior, Jesus Christ, to call us home as we follow him. This is it, the end. This isn't even the beginning of the end. What this is here is where we start. But ultimately, our final resting place isn't here. That doesn't mean we can't treasure some of the things we have here. But this is not our final resting place. Do not get too comfortable. Do not get too comfortable. So, and closely, Closing, how is your home built? So how is your house? Is it built on Christ? Following the word of God? Is it not ruled by possession and the desire to take more? Is the tithe never even discussed or talked about? Giving to the, the Lord's work? Is it welcoming and serving others? Is it focused on the eternal, not the temporary? I want you to look at all that. Maybe draw a big circle around that. Maybe write this down. If there's anything that we need during this time is to keep our focus on what really is important. Before I close in prayer and we open it up, I'll say that I very... I want to use the word proud to be the pastor of this church. What I've seen in the last 20 days has really encouraged Ann and I more than you'll ever know of seeing people step up to the plate. When we were giving gift cards out, $500 just to people that are struggling, people that are working second shifts and in, in some of the lower end of the um, in the medical profession, they were, we were able to help them. We were able to give that up. We have more coming in through our benevolence fund. We got, we're taking a group of, we're taking quite a, a bit of food to a, a temporary homeless shelter they've developed at the Avalon Hotel. We've had people writing cards, calling people. I am very, very excited to be the shepherd of this group. And I think the first thing we find, second one is, not ruled by possessions, being willing to not be self-focused is where we need to be. And not be focused on the temporary, but be focused on the eternal. Let's close in prayer, then we'll uh, take it from there. Let's close in prayer if we can. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. I thank you for this brief message. Lord, help us to keep our mind on what is true. As we learn in Matthew chapter seven, let our house be built upon a rock and not just hearing the word, but obeying it. Lord, thank you for this topical devotion tonight. And thank you for what it means to be a part of a body of believers that are not just saying one thing, but are saying it and following through and doing it as well. And we'll thank you for it. In Christ's name I pray, amen and amen.